The four bar linkage is a design found in human engineering as well as in nature. Today, we'll break it down and examine how you can use it in your own designs. This video is part of a mini series on incorporating simple yet powerful mechanisms into your own design projects. In previous videos, we covered over center mechanisms like in 3D printed latches, and then we covered cams. One example being in Automata. Today, we're gonna tackle the four bar linkage. Before we come back and explain the mechanism, let's start by looking at examples of where we might find it. And we'll start with the animation on the Wikipedia page. This is a pump jack used in the process of pumping oil. When a four bar linkage is used in this way, we can turn rotational motion from a motor into reciprocal motion, the pump oscillating back and forth. But a four bar linkage can be used in the opposite way. In fact, you do this every time you ride a bike. Our thighs form part of the mechanism and they oscillate up and down. And this is converted into rotation with the pedals and crank, which with the chain drives the bike forward. If you have a set of vice grips, they also have a four bar linkage mechanism. However, in this application, the mechanism is used to increase mechanical advantage. But it's even more versatile than that, with a version created called the Watts linkage, where the multiple links of the mechanism work to constrain motion to a straight line. And because of this, it's often found in car and train suspension systems. And there's yet another variation found inside your kneecap, where the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments work together to keep your knee joint stable as it bends. So how does a four bar linkage work? We're gonna start with a very simple 2D sketch and then go from there. Here we have a four sided shape, a parallelogram, and these are the four bars that make up the four bar linkage. The first is our ground or anchor link, and I've drawn it as part of a larger structure because normally it's the most rigid part. On one side, we have an input link, and this is what we actuate with our power source. On the opposite side, we have the output link. This will be the result of the whole system. And then joining these two on top, we have the floating link. And its job is to connect the top of the input and output links. Even with this simple sketch, we can start to animate to see how this works. And this particular version is not very exciting because I've made the links on either side exactly the same. But let's dramatically shorten the input link. And now as we rotate it, we can see that we start to get the reciprocal motion on the output link of the pump jack. The relationship between the relative length of each link is what creates the different variations. I'd like to demonstrate other methods, but this simple 2D sketch isn't gonna be good enough. In researching this video, I found a fantastic page by Matthew West, and it's on the website for the University of Illinois engineering department. This is a very powerful tool, but it is written for engineers. Therefore, it can be quickly overwhelming with all of the maths involved. But even if you ignore the maths, you can use this as a proof of concept by changing the parameters and seeing how the mechanism responds. Rather than design a series of 3D printed versions to show the different ways this mechanism can be used, my aim instead was to design a variable modular version so I could change the length and experiment. Basically a hands-on version of what the website offers. And this proved to be a lot more challenging than I was expecting. I started with this small version where each side could clip together at predetermined lengths, but the overall scale was too small and it was a little bit too fiddly. So I redesigned everything to be scaled up and beefier. This gave a positive click, but even so, as soon as there was tension within the mechanism, it liked to separate without my permission. So third time lucky, and this is my final version. And the source CAD is linked in the description in case you wanna print it or make some changes. Each link is made out of two sections, so you need four pairs, eight pieces in total to complete the mechanism. The pair of parts for each link are designed to slide back and forth within each other to vary the length. And to lock them in place, each will need an M3 nut with a low profile M3 by 10 millimeter bolt from the other side. This arrangement means that each arm can extend or contract and it only takes a second or so to lock that length into place. The holes in the ends might look the same, but they're actually slightly different. One side lets an M5 bolt slide through, whereas the other is sized so that the same bolt will cut its own thread the first time it's inserted. So now with some countersunk M5 bolts, and a few spacing washers in between the printed pieces, we can put together our base four bar linkage mechanism. To make everything more manageable, there's this screw on foot section that can attach to any of the links with long M3 bolt cutting their own thread on the way in. 
a small quality of life piece that would make the mechanism freestanding when clamped to my bench. Finally, some more clip-on multicolor labels, just so it's clear for you which are the input and output links in each example. We'll start our exploration by configuring a parallelogram. This one's pretty simple, and we have a one-to-one -one translation of reciprocal motion. Here we can see I went a little bit too far, and the whole mechanism became bound. It's not that hard for this to happen with this type of linkage, and that's why it's nice to test on a model like this, or an animated website as we saw earlier. Our first change is to make the input link much longer than the output link. And it might not look like it, but what we've recreated here is cycling on a bike. The input link being our thigh, and the output link being the bike's crank set. It did take some experimentation, but eventually I could supply reciprocating motion on the input link and keep the output link turning in a circular motion. This requires a fair bit of timing, as anyone who's attempted to ride a bike with only one leg can attest to. Let's reverse this and now make the output link much longer than the input link. If we rotate the input the whole way around, we recreate the motion of the pump jack. The output shaft now oscillates back and forth. To experiment, I changed the length of the floating link at the top, and all this did was bind up the mechanism. Again, it's good to be able to test the lengths before committing to a final design. Let's now tweak the lengths of the links, and rotate the mechanism until it crosses over on itself. And I think what we have here is something similar to the crucial ligaments inside our knee joint. And even if it doesn't match exactly, it's still a pretty dynamic way to make a hinge. The static and constrained versions are pretty interesting, but for our own projects, it's more likely they're going to be powered. So let's introduce a motor. On hand, I've got this 36 RPM geared DC motor, and I've designed a couple of variation linkage parts to fit it to the mechanism. Ignore the janky wiring, and instead notice that the input link is now powered by the motor. I've also configured the input link to be shorter than the output link. As soon as we supply power, the mechanism springs to life, and what we've created here is similar to the pump jack. The proportions of each link are different, but it's clearly the same type of mechanism. Rotational motion for the input shaft, and reciprocating motion for the output shaft. And the way this is configured, it's got quite a flick on the upward stroke. I can see an extension hand on the end of this to make a high-fiving robot, but I also couldn't unsee the potential for using this as a mechanical catapult. Goodbye Benchy, and good luck on your new voyage. I can see the potential for this arrangement in a marble machine where a collection of marbles are fed one at a time to be flung across and collected elsewhere. The key here is that this can be automated and very repeatable. And just to note, if you are printing this out to try yourself, experiment with the range of motion before you turn on the motor, because some link configurations can cause the whole thing to bind, and if you turn on the motor like this, something is going to break. Now, how about something a bit more common? A beefy metal geared servo, like you might find in an RC car. And powering that, I'm running a Pololu Maestro servo controller. This setup is great for this testing and prototyping, as you can manually control the position of the servo, including the speed and acceleration which it moves between, but then you can save these frames to create a sequence and play it in a loop to make repeatable motion. To interface with the servo, I designed this attachment that a one-sided horn slips into, with this attachment bolting onto the input shaft. The horn is a perfect fit and sits in there snugly. But I didn't design a mount for the servo body, so I guess I'll be holding that. The first test is with equal input and output lengths. And this simply makes a one-to-one -one translation of the movement. Perhaps a handy way to get two outputs when you only want to spend money on one servo. Next up, we have a shorter input link than the output link. And what we get here is a situation of mechanical advantage where a large range of motion on the input becomes a smaller range of motion on the output, but with more torque. This is just like the mechanical advantage we receive when using a lever to open a paint tin. The hand moves a lot, the tip of the tool very little, but with a huge application of force. So a four bar linkage can be a way to get more oomph out of a weak servo. How about the reverse, a long input link and a short output link. This time we have a shorter range of motion on the input compared to the output at the cost of torque. Perhaps you have a project where you only have a 90 degree servo, but you need a larger range of motion. All of this is fun, but could I replicate riding a bike, where reciprocal motion is turned into rotation? To try this, I spent a fair bit of time creating a sequence for the servo controller, tweaking speed, acceleration, and the starting and ending positions of the servo travel. Repeatability wasn't helped by the fact the servo was moving in my hand, but after a little while, all of a sudden it started to crank. 
What we have here is a servo swinging back and forth using a four bar linkage to turn that into rotation. And now I feel like making a robot with servo legs that can ride a bike. To get this to work, the range of motion of the servo has to be spot on and it needs to be fast enough that the output link will continue to spin from momentum as the servo changes direction. But once all of that is tuned, we create our reciprocal to rotary motion like when riding a bike. Back to that website by Matthew West and there's some really interesting examples of four bar linkages like in the jaw of a fish. There's also an excellent model at the base of the page where you can test various configurations to see how the output varies. If you're more hands on, feel free to print my modular version and experiment some more because the four bar linkage really is a versatile mechanism that can be used in a number of ways in our own creations. I'm a designer, not an engineer. So when making this video, I enjoyed building up my knowledge and I look forward to incorporating a four bar linkage in a future project. Let me know if you've used a four bar linkage before or if you're planning to now use one in the future. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy designing simple but powerful mechanisms. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.